Hi everyone, aloha. Welcome to another week of Trauma Recovery University. I'm your host, Athena Moberg. And normally with us in the green room would be your incredible co-host, Bobby Parrish. However, she is not with us tonight. She's feeling just a little bit under the weather. So um, thanks for everyone who is already here on the Twitter stream and hanging out and supporting one another. You guys are always so amazing. Um, if you guys want to just send some um, prayers and healing thoughts to Bobby, that would be amazing. And if you are new to this uh, broadcast, then you're probably wondering, who is this and am I in the right place? Who are these people? Well, I'm Athena Moberg and I'm an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse. And um, Bobby Parrish would normally be with me. We come here every single week and we show up and we do a live Q&A for the global community of adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. So if that is you or if you're a survivor of any type of child abuse, then uh, this broadcast will likely be very helpful for you. Tonight's topic is alternative healing methods. And I thought it would be really helpful to begin with uh, to just discuss what alternative healing methods even are. Um, we, we sort of approached this topic earlier this morning. We have three Twitter chats a week. This is the second of three. The first is at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern every Monday. The second is this one right here where you are watching this video or listening in on a podcast platform. And that's at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday, using the hashtag no more shame. And then the third Twitter chat of the week for the global community of adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse is the original sex abuse chat with Rachel Thompson. And that is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, every single Tuesday. So if that is you and you are healing, welcome, welcome. We are so excited. Over on the Twitter feed, you will find an entire community filled with awesome, supportive people, all using the hashtag no more shame, all healing from various forms of childhood trauma, and all here to support one another. So welcome. I'm so excited and so honored that you've chosen to spend this hour with us this week. Every single week we show up with a different topic. Topics are always suggested by our community. That is typically how we get every single idea that we have for a topic to discuss on any given week. So this week's topic, as I said, is alternative healing methods. And I thought it'd be just really helpful. Um, first of all, I do want to issue a trigger warning. Um, if you are a survivor, uh, this chat could be very triggering for you. And I would like to encourage you to reach out to our friends over at RAIN, and that's the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, and they can be reached at rainn.org. You can find them on Twitter at rainn01. You can also call them 24-7-365 if you're located in the United States at 1-800-656-HOPE. If you are located in the UK, then you can reach out to the Samaritans, and that's the Samaritans.org. You can also email one of their staff members who happens to take um, email from any survivors that are in crisis or that just need some questions answered about their abuse, and her name is Jo, and you can email her at jo at Samaritans.org. Org. I don't have all of the other text numbers and telephone numbers memorized the way that Bobby normally does. Um, I sort of have my part memorized that I've been doing for two years, and she has her part memorized that she's been doing for two years. And um, she's not here with me tonight. So I hope that anyone over there on the Twitter feed using the hashtag no more shame, if you could please tweet out any of those text message crisis lines or um, information in Australia. We have some information in Germany. We have information in Ireland. Um, 
if any, and, and even in Canada. So if you guys happen to uh, know those or you wanted to search in some previous tweets, um, from last week or any of the prior weeks over the past couple years, that would be incredible if you could just share that on the Twitter feed using hashtag no more shame. And I'd like to just real quick before I jump in and share what alternative healing therapies or healing modalities even are, and then we will jump into some one page content, which we do every single week. But before I do any of that, I just wanted, wanted to just Thank each and every one of you for sharing the um, little meme that we made regarding the conference this coming November. There is a conference for adult survivors of childhood trauma and healing, helping professionals that would like to learn more about trauma-informed care. Bobby and myself are very dedicated and very excited and passionate about trauma-informed care. Um, and for those of you that are wondering what trauma-informed care is, uh, there is a medical model which um, addresses our symptoms and then seeks to find what is wrong with us in a diagnosis and then seeks to heal that diagnosis. And trauma-informed care is more of an empowering modality where you come in, you share your experience, the helping professionals then um, help you, of course, in a compassionate, trauma-informed way and then empower you to seek to find ways to improve your life and um, be triggered less if you're living with any type of post-traumatic stress, if you're healing from developmental trauma, complex trauma, PTSD, um, a lot of those things that can result from childhood trauma, specifically childhood abuse. So um, if that is you and um, you guys have shared the little, the, the meme that um, is talking about our conference, I just want to say a very, very, very special thank you uh, to each of you. And if you're interested in attending this conference and you are a helping professional or a survivor, it is not too late to purchase tickets. You can go to Trauma Recovery University Live.com or bit.ly forward slash TRUCon16. And you can get all the information on um, early bird ticket pricing, which is still in effect until the end of September, I believe. And just the entire agenda, list of keynote speakers. Um, the incredible Jody Amon will be there. Brie Bonche speaking about narcissistic abuse. Bobby and myself, our very own Matt Pappas from Surviving My Past, the blog for survivors of childhood abuse, dealing with PTSD, dissociation, and anxiety. Um, anyone in the mental health community, really, that is looking to learn more about trauma-informed care, we are so excited to meet you in person in Orlando, Florida, November 11th, 12th, and 13th. So um, there's my, my shameless plug, um, and really looking forward to meeting each and every one of you. And um, just real quick, um, if you are listening on a podcast platform like iTunes or Stitcher and you're finding this broadcast anywhere, but on our YouTube channel or our Roku TV channel or on one of our websites, we want to say a very special thank you and welcome and remind you this is a video broadcast. And as a thank you for just being here with us, for being a listener, a viewer, a subscriber, or like we say, just an awesome survivor, we want to give you complimentary access to this week's one-page downloadable PDF resource that is yours, just complimentary free as a thank you just for being here. We just want to say thank you for uh, taking the time out of your week to want to further your recovery journey. Um, this is your journey. Everyone's journey is different, and everyone is healing from childhood trauma at a different pace, in a different way, um, and we're just here to support you. This entire community is amazing. So uh, and to get access complimentary to that one-page downloadable resource, you're just going to go over to one of our websites, and you can find us at nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com. And you'll see a tab that says downloadables. And if you just click that tab, you'll be given immediate, you'll be asked for your email and then given immediate access to tonight's downloadable one page resource, which is titled Alternative Healing Methods One Page. So um, we're so excited that you're here tonight. I'm gonna go ahead and just read a brief list on what alternative healing methods even are, or some examples of some alternative healing methods so that we're all just sort of on the same page. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and just read this to you. It's not exactly in a screen share form. Um, I went on Google and I just typed in alternative medicines, alternative healing methods, and I got this great list of sort of the top 10 most popular ones. And uh, one of the most popular healing alternative healing methods is acupressure and it's similar to acupuncture which is also on the list in the top 10 you guys might have also heard of aromatherapy um, or perhaps there's one called ayurvedic medicine ayurvedic medicine um, it's originated in india and has been around for th uh a couple thousand years and practitioners use a variety of techniques including herbs and massage and specialized diets um, balneotherapy biofeedback which is something that has sort of been like um, the buzz lately everybody's talking about biofeedback especially in healing from um, not only complex trauma but addiction so um, chiropractic made the top 10 list homeopathy any homeopathic type um, medicine, especially, um, and naturopathy is even on here as well, Natu naturopathic medicine is premised on the healing power of nature. Uh, reflexology, which in, can sort of be described as foot massage, <laughs> but um, the, the theory behind reflexology is if you look at the bottom of your foot, like here are your here are your five toes and here's sort of your ball of your foot and your arch and then the heel of your foot, and it's sort of a picture of your entire body, the middle being sort of your stomach and then the bottom being sort of like down like by your feet and up towards the top being your head. And if you press certain areas on the feet, then um, you receive uh, relief or healing in those areas. And then one more that made the list is Reiki, which we are going to go ahead and um, talk about in our one page as well. So that's just kind of a brief peek at what alternative healing medicines are. And um, I would like, I'm just gonna check in. Normally what this would look like um, is I would be monitoring the Twitter feed with you guys and sort of saying hi and hanging out with you. And um, hey Mert, hi Tammy, hi Amy. Oh my goodness, Amy's here. Hi, Amy, and hi, Lindsay, my domestic violence chat peeps. If you are a survivor of domestic violence, I highly suggest checking out the hashtag domestic, domestic violence chat. Um, hi, Lindy. Um, Kalisha, Maggie, Jack, Matt, Liz. I'm forgetting some people. I know that Edna and Rar, it's Laura. I know they're here. Hi, Dawn. And I know Phoenix is here. Where's Phoenix? I thought I saw August and Christy earlier as well, and maybe even Jody. Um, I'm not able to sort of keep in touch and like hang out with you guys like I normally would like to, but I'm sure you'll just bear with me. Um, and I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and probably just jump into some one page content so we can go through that and um, maybe just go a little bit deeper than we normally do because. Typically, we would have a chance to sort of talk this all out and unpack it all, but maybe I'll do that while I'm reading the one page um, so that we can go a little deeper. How about I do that? That sounds like a good idea. Um, let's see here, you guys. Unless there's some questions. This is live Q&A for a reason, so I'm, I really wanted to check and see if anybody had any questions. Hey, Katie. Hi, Beth. Would a service dog be an alternative form? Pet therapy is all, like alternative. So we have discussed pet therapy in the past. So yes, Beth, that is a great question. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm trying to see if there's any questions. I don't see any. Oh, sorry for the pause, you guys. I don't see any questions. Um, 
Well, I will check back to see if there's any questions from you guys in just a little bit. But for right now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll, um, I'll just jump into our one page and we can go a little bit deeper tonight on our content. How's that sound? I'm assuming that that sounds great. How's that? All right. Tweet me and let me know if you all can see this. I'm hoping that it's um, working. It's hard to tell sometimes because it takes a while. We have a little bit of a delay on our end when we're doing screen shares. So, okay. So hopefully you all can see this. Alternative healing methods, one page. Healing from childhood abuse is a complex process. The layers of damage done to our thinking, our emotional processing, and our bodies are thick and sometimes entwined with one another. This is why it often makes multiple therapy modalities, this is why it often takes multiple therapy modalities to recover. In previous videos, we have discussed expressive therapies, dialectical behavioral therapy, music therapy, thank you Laura for combining that list, cognitive behavioral therapy, and even pet therapy. There you go, Beth. Um, we've also discussed um, movies and books, and Maggie and um, a whole bunch of you guys actually, Jack, and a whole bunch of you contributed to um, combine, compiling that list for our survivor community. I have to get access to that and put it on the website. Um, we encourage seeking treatment from medical and mental health professionals, and we also think many survivors can benefit from alternative healing methods. In this one page, we will provide a few alternative methods we have found to be powerful. Oh, I wanted to look at you guys for a minute. Here, hopefully, I, hopefully y'all can see me. I wonder if you guys can see me. I think you can. Okay, so one of the things we're discussing tonight is Ho'oponopono. And we mentioned this in a couple of previous broadcasts and you guys were like really excited about it. So um, really quick, Ho'oponopono is, um, it is from ancient Hawaiian culture. And this morning during chat, it was really difficult in 140 characters to describe what Ho'oponopono is, um, especially since part of it is about um, communicating, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you, will you please forgive me? And of course, we as survivors of childhood sexual abuse, we don't need to be apologizing to our abusers for anything. Um, we weren't the ones that caused them it doesn't matter what we did as children. It doesn't ever give our abusers a green light to be like, yeah, um, you wore the wrong color of shirt and it's time for you to get abused. <laughs> like, Or you spoke wrong or you didn't clean your room or you didn't clean your plate or whatever it might be. Like, There's never an excuse or a green light uh, or just like a free hall pass to abuse children. Like abusing children is always wrong. It always will be wrong, period. So I want to look at you in the eyes and I want to tell you that during the discussion of Ho'oponopono tonight, when we discuss, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, this is not directed towards our abusers. I am not one of those people that are all over the internet that say that they're thankful for their abuse. There are some YouTube, there are some YouTube videos, y'all, if you're like on the internet searching for healing from childhood sexual abuse, there are a lot of YouTubers that make videos, that vlog, and I will hear them say time and time again that they are thankful for their abuse. I'm actually grateful that my dad sexually abused me. I know that may sound odd, but I'm thankful that he chose to sexually abuse me. I'm sorry, but you're not going to ever hear Bobby or myself say that we are grateful that we were sexually abused, and nor do we suggest that you, beautifuls, that you guys need to be grateful for your abuse. No. And I just wanted to look at you in the face and tell you that as we dig into Ho'oponopono, because part of Ho'oponopono is please forgive me, I'm sorry, thank you, 
I love you. <laughs> so just wanted to say that to your face before we have any misconstrued information. So here we go. I'm going to screen share again. That was worthy of me getting out of there and looking at you real quick. So here it goes. All right. So Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono is a method of healing and reconciliation which arises from the Native Hawaiian culture. It is based upon the belief that our life experience derives from our subconscious mind. It is a simple yet powerful process comprised of making four statements. I am sorry, and this is what I was mentioning earlier, we apologize to ourselves for the damage we may have done to ourselves in order to cope with our trauma, such as overeating, drinking, or cutting. Now I'm gonna pause right here. I know that we received many messages from you all, um, DMs and Facebook messages and YouTube messages and emails saying that you prefer when we just read the one page straight through. But I have to pause on this, full, on this first bullet point and I need to expound upon this in a way that would not fit on this one page. Now, you've heard us talk about the work of grieving, grieving our childhood, grieving the innocence that was stolen from us, grieving the relationships that we never had, grieving the relationships we wished we would have had. Part of this grieving process for many survivors is grieving the healthy coping strategies that we so often are unable to access. In the midst of our trauma, we go to our immediate, whatever is the first thing we can come to, and typically that is to avoid our pain, numb our pain, or stuff our pain. Again, that bears repeating. The very first instinct that we typically have when we are beginning our healing journey from childhood abuse and we are overcome with trauma and memories and flashbacks and all kinds of different symptoms that can be debilitating, we tend to stuff, avoid, or numb. Now those three things are going to cause us to suffer more. And some ways that we avoid or numb are by overeating or by drinking alcohol or taking too many drugs or even self-harm such as cutting. And one thing that is not on the list here which I would like to talk about briefly is eating disorders. When we choose to withhold calories or to binge or purge, that is self-harm. And when we are going through the, the process of Ho'oponopono, this is a divine relationship with our higher power and ourselves. And we are teaming up with ourselves on the evil that was brought onto our bodies. I want to say that again. The process of Ho'oponopono is, it can be considered a spiritual experience with our higher power and us, and we join up with our bodies. We're on the same team with our bodies. We don't decide to hate our bodies. We don't hold that contempt that we've had for our bodies, especially if we experienced pleasure during our abuse at any point, if we were sexually abused. A lot of times, People that have been sexually abused, and if they experience orgasm or climax, they hate their bodies and they feel betrayed by their bodies. But an orgasm or climax during intercourse or during any type of vaginal or, or penile um, arousement or touching or, or anything, that is the body's natural response. So... If we experience an orgasm or if we experience pleasure physically during our abuse, again, even if it's on a subconscious level, we later on down the road when we are remembering our trauma 
and we are processing our abuse, we tend to have a deep, deep, deep level of self-hatred, or we feel betrayed by our bodies. And so what we end up doing is we separate ourselves from our bodies, and we begin to hate our bodies because we feel betrayed by them. So this beginning process of Ho'oponopono is us getting on the same team with our bodies and our higher power, and we are literally ministering to our bodies and telling our bodies that we are sorry. We are sorry that, not that we caused our own abuse or anything like that, it has nothing to do with that. We are, we are saying we are sorry to our bodies for damaging them or for cutting because we just wanna feel like we're alive and we're sick of feeling numb, or for, for binge eating, for purging, for withholding calories, over drinking, uh, taking, uh, taking drugs, recreational drugs, overeating to the point where we make ourselves sick. These are all ways that we avoid dealing with our trauma. And we are saying to our bodies that we are sincerely sorry and that we love our body and that we want the best for our body. This can be very, very, very painful for survivors. Survivors usually feel betrayed by their bodies. They hate their bodies. They don't like their curves. They don't like, um, they don't like the way their bodies are shaped. They've always felt overweight or underweight. They don't like the way their muscles um, tend to be either toned or not toned. And we are telling our bodies that we are sorry for all of the abuse that they have gone through. We are sorry that they endured trauma, we are sorry that they endured abuse and violation, and we are sorry for the part we played in overeating, drinking alcohol, cutting, taking drugs, or, or anything that is unhealthy to our bodies. The next stage of Ho'oponopono is forgive me. We are literally seeking our own forgiveness. We are literally asking ourselves, I hope you will forgive me for the damage that I may have done, not only psychologically through avoiding or stuffing or numbing or just the delay, not dealing with things for a really long time because I avoided for so long. Or for me personally, I, was, I dealt with anorexia. I dealt with bulimia. I've dealt with uh, body dysmorphia, which is not an eating disorder, but it's a body image disorder. You can Google that, body dysmorphia. You can also reach out to Brian Cuban. Um, on Twitter, he's at bcuban, and he has written a book, and I think he has a second one coming out on the topic of body dysmorphia. It's called Shattered Image. Excellent book. I read it in one sitting. Um, highly recommend. Um, so we're literally asking our bodies to forgive us. And again, we're on the same team, like our bodies are a part of us. The sooner we get in touch with our bodies and stop hating our bodies and stop hating the way our stomach does that thing, hate the way our knees are shaped, hate the way our toes are chubby, hate the way our, our, our toes are shaped, hate our hands, our fingernails, our arms, the color of our skin, our freckles, our blemishes, the way our nose is shaped, our lips are too small, they're too big, our eyes are too wide set or too narrow, we don't like our cheekbones, we have no cheekbones. All of these things ask our body for forgiveness. And again, it's, this is like a spiritual thing, like whoever your higher power, my higher power is God. I have a personal relationship with God through, through Jesus. That is my, that's my spiritual belief, I'm a Christian. And and so I'm literally in an attitude of almost prayer and seeking forgiveness, seeking for my body to really understand that I'm sorry for all that I've done to it, all that I've allowed to be done to it. Like for many survivors, myself included, there was a period of promiscuity. There was, oh, well, sex is what I'm supposed to do. I'm su this is what I'm good for. I was used in this way to go please people in this way. So I'm going to, that must be love and that must be how I can feel fulfilled. So I'm going to go do that. So I was promiscuous, right? That was damaging. That was damaging to, to me on a soul level and, and definitely on a physical level. So I'm literally asking for forgiveness. Like, please forgive me for not only withholding calories and harming my intestines and my colon through bulimia, 
but the promiscuity, like that was degrading and it was, it was painful. So, 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 so painful, you guys. When you think back on things like that, it is so tempting to skip over it and be like, well, I did all I could. I did the best I could. But, but that's not owning it. And I'm choosing to own it. I'm choosing to tell my body, I'm sorry. I'm choosing to say to my body, please forgive me. I, I want to be able to forgive myself. Like it's one thing to be forgiven by your higher power and feel like, like your higher power understands what you've been through, like that God understands. But for you to be able to really forgive yourself on like a cellular level, I mean, it is, it's transformational and it takes a long time. I am not here sitting here telling you that I've arrived. I am in the process of this and Ho'oponopono is just one of the things that I value and I was so happy that Bobby brought it to my attention. A client actually told Bobby about Ho'oponopono and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm very familiar with that. We use it in the school systems here in Hawaii when there's bullying and like literally they sit the kids down and there's like parent teacher conference with the principal and all of that and we go through Ho'oponopono. So um, very valuable. So that's number one and number two, the first and second bullet point. I'm sorry and please forgive me. And again, we are literally teaming up for the first time with our own bodies. Instead of bringing war against our bodies by starving ourselves, binge eating, self-harm, cutting, or even just ugly thoughts about our body. Like, ew, look, I hate it when my stomach does that thing. Ew, I hate my calves. I hate this. Why does my hair grow in so dark? I can't stand this. I have to shave so often. This sucks. Oh my gosh, I have razor burn. I hate my fingernails. My toes are ugly. All of these things that we think about our bodies, you guys, they cause deep, deep, deep damage on a, on a subconscious level. Like those are things that, those are tapes that continue to play. And they just, they continue to play in our in our minds in the back of our heads and it's just painful so i'm going to move on to the third bullet point here and i'm anticipating a whole slew of emails from you all so no more shame project at gmail.com if you guys have complaints or questions about tonight's broadcast i'm already sort of anticipating that we're going to get a whole flood of this usually when i'm by myself and bobby's not here i get like a ton of emails asking a bazillion questions so um, i'm ready <laughs> send them. I'll do my best to answer them within the next week. I'm moving on to the third bullet point now. And that is thank you. So it goes, I'm sorry, forgive me. Thank you. So I'm literally in an attitude of gratitude, expressing gratitude for all things in my life, tangible and intangible. And again, this is with my higher power. And this is me thanking my body for getting me through to this point. Like, like I'm, I, I'm choosing to do this with my body because I have major body issues. So I'm sure you could, I mean, Ho'oponopono isn't just about body, okay? It's about anything. Relationships. Again, like I said, in the school systems, we use this for bullying. But for me, I'm focusing on body because it's something that I can relate to and I know that so many people in our community have self-hatred that they deal with on a regular basis, especially regarding body issues. So the third bullet point is thank you, expressing gratitude for all things in life. And so what that looks like for me is I'm saying, wow, thank you, like to my higher power, to God. Thank you, God. I am so grateful for life. I'm, I'm grateful for breath. I'm grateful for my eyesight, that I have a sense of smell and taste and that I can hear and that I have a sense of touch. I'm grateful that I have two arms and two legs. I'm grateful that in this moment where I'm sitting here right now, I don't have a lot of pain going on, although sometimes I do deal with some chronic pain. And many people in our community deal with chronic illnesses, um, chronic pain, different autoimmune disorders. Um, and I know that it's, it's not easy to be grateful for, for that if that's what you're dealing with. Find something to be grateful for. Something. One thing. That's all this is about. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Expressing gratitude for all things in our lives. And so I'm saying, you know, thank you to my body. Like, thank you for getting me through this far. Thank you even though I damaged you. Um, through so many unhealthy coping strategies, you've gotten me this far. And I'm so, so, so grateful for that. 
And then the last part, the fourth bullet point on Ho'oponopono is I love you. Telling my body that I literally love my body. I love myself. This does not come easy. This is not something that feels natural. This is, I've not arrived, okay guys? This is not easy. I love you, expressing self-love. <sighs> not easy. Super not easy. I can express gratitude to every single one of you guys and all the emails and texts and messages and all the stuff that you guys send me. But to, to point that towards myself, super not easy. So Ho'oponopono is about consciously choosing to heal our relationship with ourselves and with others. And then here in bold, what I mentioned earlier, note, we are not saying we are sorry to our abusers apologizing for causing our childhood abuse. Rather, we are tending to our mind and body's pain and reconciling with our body and our mind in a way that is conducive to healing. We have held contempt for our bodies, even subconsciously. And when we choose to intentionally join our body with a goal of wholeness, miracles happen. Seriously, miraculous things happen, you guys. My body has been able to heal itself over the past 10 years in ways that I never thought were possible. I had precancerous cells in certain areas of my body because of the severe child abuse that I endured. And over the past 10 years, I have, I've experienced healing because I'm out of a toxic situation. So if there's any way for you to remove yourself from the toxicity that is nearby within, you know, uh, within local proximity, I'm telling you, your body will begin to heal itself over time. When we choose to grieve, we join ourselves rather than abandon ourselves. And abandonment, depression, self-abandonment, those are big, big, big things. Self-abandonment is something which has kept us bound to our abuse and our pain. And I referenced this in the beginning when I talked about the I'm sorry part of Ho'oponopono. We abandoned our bodies. We turned against our bodies in so many ways. I do not know one survivor who has not turned against their body in one way or another, whether that is through struggles with hygiene. And when I say struggles, I mean struggling to, because of their depression, they struggle to shower or brush their hair or brush their teeth. And then there's the flip side of the coin, guys. There's over brushing your teeth and over washing your hair and washing your hands too many times and scrubbing your body so hard that it leaves marks and obsessive compulsive showering and bathing and clean, like changing your clothes four times a day always needing to look perfect every hair needs to be in place your makeup always needs to be done it goes both ways you guys it goes both ways and both are things that are not healthy. There needs to be some sort of a healthy balance and it's difficult for survivors, especially if our abuse happened when we were really, 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 really young, like between the ages of zero and eight. Um, so hopefully Ho'oponopono and how we touched on that, hopefully that was helpful for you. I'm going to go ahead and move down to the second area that we are talking about and that is Reiki healing. Reiki healing is based on the Japanese concept of energy healing. Rei, meaning the wisdom of our higher power, and Ki, meaning life force energy. Practitioners of Reiki healing believe there is a flow of energy in our bodies that when low, causes illness, and when high, promotes happiness and healing. A Reiki healing session is comprised of the client lying flat in a relaxed state while the certified and trained practitioner uses their hands to manipulate the flow of energy in their client's body. This is not like massage. And when we say it's not like massage, it's because Reiki does not involve the practitioner touching the client. Many of us who are adult survivors of childhood abuse of any kind, specifically childhood sexual abuse, 
have major, major blocks and major issues with being touched and do not enjoy massage. I have received countless messages and emails asking me how people can get past the fact that they don't like massage. My husband wants to go and get a couple's massage with me. I was on my honeymoon and we got a massage and I felt so guilty and I shamed myself the whole time because I didn't enjoy the massage. Athena, when am I going to be able to enjoy massage? When am I going to be able to enjoy touch? Athena, I just want to be able to enjoy massage. Athena, when I go get a pedicure, it makes me nauseous. I don't like the way it feels when people touch my feet or my legs. It was what my abuser did. I mean, I can't even count the number of messages I have received on the topic of being touched, specifically massage. Reiki, on the other hand, is different. Um, my girlfriend, Diane Larson, that I used to work with at the Ritz-Carlton here in Maui, Hawaii, she and I worked um, in the spa together at the resort. And she ended up leaving the spa at the, at the Ritz-Carlton and, and studying Reiki. And she became a Reiki master and then moved to the mainland. And I believe she teaches other people Reiki now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so she became a practitioner and then she became a Reiki master. And again, it's you lying there in a, uh, in a relaxed state, whether that's face down on a massage table where you have that area to breathe or lying face up. And then they literally hover their hands over you. And you're usually relaxed with your eyes closed. And there, what Reiki is, there's a presupposition of there is energy that flows from one body to another, like healing energy. And um, I've never personally experienced relief and enjoyment from a Reiki session. I have had one Reiki session before, um, but it wasn't something that was, it wasn't, I don't think it was the right time for me. Um, I was kind of in a place in my healing journey where, I was sort of just processing and not really ready to take on any new modalities or think about anything else. But um, if this is something that sounds interesting to you, I don't know that you have anything to lose by trying it. So um, I'm going to move down to the next section, which is called smudging. Now, smudging is a practice that rises from Native American culture. Um, I received an email from someone, I think it was like a year ago, actually, asking me if I had ever heard of smudging. And at that time, I had not really even like, looked into it or um, or studied it or even cared to uh, research it or anything. Um, but they were messaging me. Um, the email I got was from, I want to say it was from Montana. It's like Montana or Idaho. Um and they were just mentioning that someone had mentioned to them that this might be something that would help them with their healing um, from their childhood trauma. And at that point, I had never heard of it. But here we are discussing it once again. So perhaps it holds some merit. And we've done some research. Um, Maggie, our research intern for Trauma Recovery University, did some extensive research, which I couldn't fit everything here on the page. But I highly recommend Googling smudging or even smudging, comma, Native American culture. Um, this involves the burning of a sacred plant, usually sage, and letting the smoke fill a physical space or surround a person. The goal is to combat negativity, clear energy in a space, and start anew. Now, my girlfriend, Caroline, um, she moved here to Maui and she lived in this area. I forget where it was that she was living. Oh, she, she was living um, not too far from me. And then she moved to a new place and she felt really awkward and strange in her new place. And so she actually had her boyfriend come over and perform a smudging ceremony. He lit, a, he lit sage and they did this whole thing where they filled the whole place up with smoke and, and, and they prayed and it was really beautiful. And then this this bouquet of sage was wrapped in this beautiful ribbon. And she actually hung what was left of the sage above her above her door. And it's like it's just anyway, it's beautiful. So, um, but she's she's felt comfortable in her spot that she lives in now. I believe ever since they prayed and did this smudging ceremony. So, um, smudging also invites the presence of our higher power 
into a place or into our lives. You can find information about smudging ceremonies and prayers online. There are a lot of videos that I noticed, you guys, on YouTube um, about smudging and different chants and prayers. Um, so these are some alternative healing methods that um, there were so many more. You guys, there were so many. And I did not have room on the one page to fit all of them. I shrunk the font as small as I could. And um, so hopefully you guys will look into any of these that you think might be helpful for you. Um, ask us about getting plugged into a free online safe support group for survivors. And you can click right there if you go to um, download and get, you can get access to this complimentary um, screen share that I'm showing right now by going to nomoreshameproject.com or traumarecoveryuniversity.com and then find the tab that says downloadables and just click and then look for the one that says alternative healing methods one page. So once again, you can choose to try any of these alternative methods to see if they're right for you. Or you can choose not to, but what have you got to lose? So um, hopefully that is helpful for you guys. Let me see. I'll go back over here and um, stop sharing this screen with you guys. I'm hoping that that, that, that worked. Okay, so um, I'm going to check and see really quick if there are any questions. Thank you to Matt and Jack and everyone that are on the Twitter stream and helping me moderate um, tonight with Bobby being out. Um, I really appreciate you guys. <laughs> um, let's see. Kalisha says, okay, that trauma to our bodies had affected us mentally, so healing through our physical senses also heals us mentally? Question um, mark. I would say yes. I would say that healing, I feel like healing is an, is an all over body experience. Um, but, and, and it's all connected. I, I haven't thought this thought or said this thought out loud yet. I'm still thinking about it and I'm going to try to see if I can say it intelligently. Um, Kalisha, but so for instance, we can heal our bodies and get our bodies into a place that is healthy in air quotes without being he without being healthy mentally and emotionally that's definitely possible and then there's also a possibility to be in a in a place of healing mentally and emotionally without engaging our bodies but i feel like perhaps the best and i'm not like judging anyone but like i think for me like the best overall healing experience is one that that includes everything. Um, I like for, for me personally, like where I am in my healing journey right now, um, I can look back like six years ago and I can say, wow, physically I was in excellent shape. I was doing half marathons. I was training for a marathon. I, but if we're all being honest, up here in my mind, I was avoiding. I was avoiding like nobody's business. Like seriously, you guys, I remember thinking about stuff, right? And I would scratch the surface of healing regarding my abuse, but it was too painful for me to delve into. Like I couldn't reconcile the fact that if I accepted everything that really was true, that that was going to change my relationships with my family members. And that was too painful for me to deal with. So I wasn't willing. I was willing to work out and walk a couple miles every day, two, three miles a day. I was willing to do these half marathons. I was willing to train for this marathon, but I was not willing to establish and maintain healthy interpersonal boundaries with my family members. I just was not willing at all. I know that's not healthy, and I know you all are not going to judge me. <laughs> no judge. <laughs> But I was not in a place where I could heal physically and mentally and emotionally together at the same time. It was not possible for me at that time. 
I was dealing with my son getting ready to go off to college. He didn't end up going to college. He ended up going into the military. That was super duper duper traumatic. And I kept pushing off and putting, putting my, my, my discussions that I needed to have with my family members on the back burner. In fact, I remember I had one of my abusers come here um, to visit me. They, well, a couple of them came to visit me a couple of times, actually, and it never really went well. It was always very unhealthy. So I'm still trying to answer your question, Kalisha. I'm sorry. The question is, the trauma to our bodies has affected us mentally, so healing through our physical senses also heals us mentally? Question mark. And I'm saying yes, but I'm also saying it's possible to do one or the other and not both. But like for me right now, I'm trying to do both <laughs> because it's the other way, the other way and it didn't tell you like what it looked like, like what the landscape looked like at the time. Um, six or seven years ago, um, maybe even eight years ago at this point, I had one of my abusers come and visit me and I had dreamed of her coming here. I dreamed of it. I played it all out of my mind. I was so excited for her to come visit. I couldn't wait. It was just something that I was like really looking forward to. I, I was like fantasizing about the relationship I never had and how it was going to be different this time. And I can't tell you how horribly wrong it went. It was just, it was a disaster. Uh, she was in full sabotage mode and it was human good moments. But for the most part, it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating. But I was trying to keep it together because I wanted to keep it together in front of my son. And I wanted to not traumatize him because he was going to be leaving to go off to college or go in the military, as it turned out. So I tried having a conversation with her and bringing up my abuse with her while she was here. That did not go well. Um, she blamed me. Why didn't you say something? If I would have known I could have done something, it's your fault for not saying something. And then we just agreed to disagree. And then I tried to have the conversation with her again, like a year later. And she pretended that she didn't even know what I was talking about. And then I tried to have the conversation with her again. And that did not go well. And so at this point, I was in a good rhythm, like healing my body physically like going to the doctors, taking my vitamins, exercising, training for training for half marathons, training for that marathon, um, doing really, really well. But mentally and emotionally, I'm being real with myself right now, I was stuffing and I was avoiding and I was numbing. Um, I was numbing through over-exercising. I was avoiding through a lot of ways <laughs> and I was stuffing and just I wasn't dealing with anything. I just wasn't dealing with it. I just couldn't deal. So um, I think I intuitively knew that it was going to be painful when my son moved away because I was a single mom of one boy and he was leaving and I was going to be empty nesting and I had never done that before. So I think I was sort of like, oh, this might be kind of hard. I might want to like brace myself, you know, um, but I didn't know how traumatizing it was going to be and I didn't know the cumulative nature of trauma to the degree that I understand the cumulative nature of trauma now. So I wish that for the past six years, I had been healing my body physically, intentionally, and mentally and emotionally. But for the past six years, I've been focusing on the mental and emotional healing. And when it came to the physical healing, I was numbing, avoiding, and stuffing. So I did a flip-flop. Previously, I was numbing, stuffing, and avoiding my mental and emotional healing and now for the past six years I've sort of been mentally emotionally um, healing and stuffing and avoiding and numbing my mental m my physical healing <laughs> so um, I've been making a, a slow shift over the past probably six months or so to where I've really been focused on physical healing and meant like overall wellness, like mental, emotional, physical, all of it. I've really been like on this path, but I haven't arrived. And it's super painful and difficult to do um, unless you have a safe community like we have. And it is super painful and difficult to do if you don't have any healthy habits 
healthy interpersonal daily habits in place. If it wasn't for my daily habits that I have been developing over the past few years, I would not be able to be healing right now. The fact that I am intentionally taking time out every single morning to go through everything in my DBT workbook every single day for years. Like, I'm not saying that I've been studying DBT for years, but like, I look at all the things that I'm doing from my DBT workbook and I'm like, oh, I've been doing those things for years. Wow, okay, that's that's why I'm doing so well mentally and emotionally because I'm doing these things. Um, but to have that spiritual practice, that quiet time, 15 minutes a day, every single day, setting the pace for your day, it's not as simple as taking 15 minutes a day, but it is as simple as taking 15 minutes a day because I feel like I start I intentionally start my day with the intention of being healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and otherwise. Like, I set my intention first thing in the morning and I sort of touch base with myself throughout the day to see how I'm doing. And I have accountability in place for myself with my husband or with prayer partners that I have just from all over the globe that ask if they can pray for me on a daily basis or will I pray for them. Um, and then just quiet time and deep breathing and making sure that I'm taking the vitamins that my body needs and making sure that I am connected to the people I need to be connected with, that I am just radically accepting myself the way that I am and that I am in a place of profound service to others. You guys, this is not part of the alternative healing one page because I don't know if this is even like an alternative healing method. But if you choose within yourself to be in a place of profound service to others, you like you literally have a heart for other people and you want to serve them in a way that is helpful and life-changing, I'm telling you it is therapeutic. It is just something that I didn't realize that that was one of the things that was helping me to heal. For so many years, I've been in a place of serving other people. And I didn't realize that that was something that was helping me so much until I sort of stepped away from any ministry that I was involved in or any acts of service, like service to the community. I didn't realize that that was something that was so hugely important to my healing journey until I sort of took a step back and I'm like, whoa, wait a second, something's missing. I, I'm not in a, in a place of service to others like I have been. So um, I know that it's difficult when we're in a place when we don't even have enough energy to make it through the day, let alone serve other people and help them with stuff. And I'm not suggesting that you go towards burnout. Um, I'm not suggesting that at all. But I am saying that I'm thinking you need to be very patient with yourself. If you are healing physically and that is something that you're focused on and it's going well, honor that and be patient with yourself on the mental and emotional healing. If you're healing yourself and you're in a place of mental and emotional healing and that's something that you're committed to and it's going well for you, don't try to add too much back onto your plate and then battle overwhelm. Um, for me, the physical healing was something that I dove into and it was like, yeah. And then looking back, I can see that I was avoiding mental and emotional well-being. And then over the past few years, I've been really focused on a place of mental and emotional wellness. But I can see that I've lacked in the physical, like working out, cardio, like any weights or anything like that, like strength training. Um, I haven't been doing that. I've been eating excellent. I follow the anti-inflammatory pyramid. I'm taking supplements like nobody's business. Like I'm doing those things, but I need to kick up my I need to kick up my cardiovascular exercise and my strength training and sort of like I have a few yoga balls that I stretch on and some floor exercises that I do. And I actually really love Zumba and I love hip hop. Um, aerobics. <laughs> it makes me super happy. <laughs> I love just dancing randomly to like songs and singing and 
but I kind of like aerobics, like hip hop aerobics classes, like where you're with a bunch of other people. So hopefully that answered that question in a very roundabout way. Um, I should have answered it a little more directly probably, but um, I will try to find if there's any more questions. Um, and if I don't get to your question for some reason, I am very sorry. My ther um, August says, my therapist says that the fact that I am feeling anything is good because I just denied my whole life. Yes. For those of us who are numbers, like who struggle with self-harm because we're so numb all the time and we just, we self-harm because we just want to feel anything. We want to feel alive. Um, I'm with your therapist. Yes. That's amazing, August. Um, um Dominique says, I'm starting to think that the ability to feel that it's too painful means that I'm healing. Yes, it is painful, and but it is healing, like, and healing is so painful. Um, Tina, oh, welcome, Tina. Hi, Tina Hamilton. Um, welcome to our chat. I'm glad you're here. Never heard anyone speak so openly about things before. Or to write, I've never said anything. Does this get easier to hear? Um, yes, it does get easier. I'm assuming Tina, I, I think Tina's new. Hi, Tina. Um, and I want to say yes, it does get easier. Like the only reason I'm able to sit here and talk so openly about all this so easily is because I've been showing up every single week doing this for over two years. Um, but a couple years ago, if you choose to go back and watch those videos, please handle them with an extra measure of grace because we fumble our way through them and there's tears and there's crying. And so, yeah, it does, it does get easier and it gets easier not only to hear, but it gets easier to share and sharing and knowing that you're impacting another human life is so healing. So please don't give up, Tina. Um, Dawn says, this is important to serve others and help others. Give a meaning to my abuse. That is not for nothing. Yes, 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 Dawn. You're absolutely right. And there's a lot of people talking about the smell of musk. Yeah, no, I'm not a big musk fan. Um, um, grapefruit. I'm not sure if grapefruit is, maybe grapefruit is healing. I'm not sure. Oh, Maggie. Girlfriend, I am with you. I cannot stand patchouli. It is a trigger for me. I had an ex-boyfriend that wore patchouli, and I just, it's not something that I can handle. I just cannot handle patchouli, Maggie. Um, thank you, Simi. Simi says, Athena, you may never arrive, but that's okay. You have us. Thank you. I need you guys, and I'm grateful for you. So um, let's see here. Uh, Oh, Tammy says that she bathes in lavender and she uses lavender oil under her nose when when having pain somnia and she takes melatonin to help also. I love lavender oil and I have put it under my nose before when I felt like triggered. Lavender oil and peppermint oil are the only two essential oils that are not triggering for me, Tammy. So way to go on the lavender. I'm like definitely with you there. Um, Jack loves grapefruit and patchouli, and that is so good. I'm glad you know what works for you, Jack. Go you. Um, let's see. I'm going backwards here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who are listening on a podcast and you don't, you're not here hanging out with me knowing what's going on. I'm just being silent. Um, oh, no. August says this is all just too painful, and I don't think I can get better. August, I was right there in that place. Um, if I can recommend a book to you, August, um, or to anyone, I'm I'm actually going through the workbook right now with a husband and wife couple, and we're doing sort of a, a couples um, coaching and going through a workbook together, and it's called Healing the Wounded Heart, and there was a book written 25 years ago by Dr. Dan Allender, and it was called The Wounded Heart, and then 25 years later, 2016, he did like a reprise, like a, a an updated version of this book, and it's called Healing the Wounded Heart, and there's a workbook that goes along with it, and I am telling you there is freedom in that book, 
and it's amazing. And there is healing and restoration and transformation that is happening during our coaching calls. And just in my interpersonal relationships, the fact like I feel so blessed that I get to be a coach for a living. Like I feel like I'm healing right along with all of my clients. So the um, healing the wounded heart by Dr. Dan Allender. And he is a Pacific Northwester, you guys, Simeon Jack um, and Venny Kosis. Um, yeah, he sometimes preaches in different churches in Washington and he is um, he heads up the Allender Center for Recovery, I think is what it's called. And he is um, a professor or a director at the Seattle School of Healing or something, something. Anyway, it's, it's all right there in Washington. I don't know if they're in Kennewick, but like, I don't think he's in Kennewick. But anyway, not far, Simi and Jack. You guys should check him out. Dr. Dan Allender. Um, I fangirl out whenever I start talking about him. So... Um, Simi says, I've been taught that our spirit and our body are one, like joined. You heal one and you are taking strides in healing both. I would agree with that. I think it's all connected. I do. But I also, like I said earlier, think that it is possible to focus on one area of healing to the point where you're sort of like obsessively doing it and you're like neglecting like other areas, which is what I did. I'm not saying you guys do that, but I did it for sure. I was so super duper focused on being skinny, skinny, skinny. I needed to be skinny. I had convinced myself that if I could fit into a pair of size seven jeans, that that I would rule the world. <laughs> Not that I want to rule the world, but like whatever that phrase is. <laughs> I was convinced that if I was skinny, that the world would be perfect and that all would be right in the world. All of my memories would go away nothing else would matter because I would be skinny <laughs> and I can't tell you how wrong I was. <laughs> so, um, but here I am focusing on being mentally and emotionally healthy and um, healing my body from the inside out. And I feel like I'm already dropping some weight. Like my body's just sort of like following step. So, um, or following suit. So I, I do think that we're all um, it's all very connected. Uh, Matt says, a friend gave me a sandalwood necklace before. It's supposed to help calm you down and relax. Sandalwood, I've heard, is very calming. Way to go, Matt. Um, let's see here. Lavenders. Rosemary. Love rosemary. Um, aromatherapy. Oh, Dawn says she loves smudging. She loves the white sage cleansing. Oh, Liz says, I am such a people pleaser. I'm working on that and also being able to say no. Yes, and Kalisha says, saying no is hard to do, but it is so important. And I just want to just high fives to Liz and Kalisha. Girls, saying no or learning how to say no, just to honor ourselves and to honor what is right for us and not be focused on people pleasing. Oh, it is so painful and so difficult. And we guilt ourselves and it just goes against all of our grooming. It goes against all of our grooming. It goes against the gaslighting. It goes against the, the, the way we were conditioned. Um, but it is something that is an investment in your sanity, ladies. Oh, my goodness. And gentlemen, you guys, it's, a, it's an investment in our sanity. Um, music therapy. Dawn says, I do music therapy, aromatherapy, relaxation therapy, positive self-talk, et cetera. Um, I love all of those. Dawn, awesome. Kalisha says, um, I do this with my current partner. Not all the time, but I would rather never do it. What is she talking about? Let's see. Um, yes. Oh, this started when I was talking earlier um, about um, promiscuity and how I was, in my mind, I was like, this is what I'm for. I'm supposed, this is what I'm, this is what I was obviously made for. I was made to be of service to other people in a sexual way or just in complete boundaryless giving of myself and all of my resources. And Liz says, oh my gosh, I do the same thing. And then Simi says, I swung the other way and I was terrified of sex in general until I met my ex. And which again, it's that black and white, right? The pendulum swings so far in the other directions, you guys. Um, 
I did this too. Kalisha says, I did this too. I was all over the place. That's me. I was so all over the place. It was either all and like too much or it was like, no, I'm waiting until I get married, which is what I ended up doing. But like it was, there was no happy medium, you guys. It was all like, eh, or eh. Um, Simi says, while I was with my ex, I swung the whole other way. I was being a people pleaser and not a self healer. I've totally done that. And Kalisha says, I do this with my current partner, not all the time, but I would rather that I never do that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, Tina, I am so happy that you're here. I think that you're, um, you just joined us. So thank you for welcoming her, you guys. This is a safe place. And I don't see any other questions. I wish that I could have hung out with you guys and like answered all of your questions in real time. I'm sorry that it's so late. Um, I don't have my little fancy screen shares that Bobby normally has um, to welcome all of the all of the new people. But I want to say a very special thank you to each and every one of you that um, that came and just hung out with us tonight, even if it was your first time here on our video or here on our Twitter chat. Um, we're happy that you were here with us. We're super grateful. And um, you're, you're welcome to come back every week. We're here every single Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And it's the global community of adult survivors of childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse, but anyone who has lived through childhood trauma would benefit from these broadcasts and these Twitter chats um, because childhood trauma, developmental trauma, affects the brain and it affects so many of our ways of developing whether it was physically mentally emotionally spiritually um, even financially or occupationally a lot of our survivors struggle with um, knowing how to open a bank account or balance a checkbook or hold down a job and a lot of our survivors in our community live with autoimmune disorders and are permanently disabled because of their childhood abuse because of permanent brain damage or because of autoimmune disease or because of um, chronic pain or just a, just a myriad of other things that are going on so if that is you and this is your first time here or you're just discovering this video three years from now at like two in the morning and you can't sleep we have an awesome community it's a safe community online we have tons of different groups some groups have hundreds of people in them and some groups have like a dozen people <laughs> um, just depends on what group you want to be in we have four groups right now and we're opening up more groups right now we have one for women only um, healing childhood abuse um, women and men healing together so co-ed uh, we have one for LGBTQ community, if you identify with the LGBTQ community. And, and you can be cisgender and still be there as well. Like if you were a woman or a man, born as a woman or a man, and you identify as being a woman or a man, but you identify with the LGBTQ community, you're welcome. You're welcome to be there. And then we have a fourth group that is specifically for narcissistic abuse. That is if you were born into a family of origin that is narcissistically abusive or if you have survived a relationship in your adult life with someone who is narcissistic or psychopathic or sociopathic or Machiavellian or any of the cluster B sort of um, anybody that's cluster B so if that's something that you would like and then we have a fifth group that's going to be starting up very 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 soon and that is for survivors of childhood abuse who are also living with chronic pain or chronic illness and then we have a sixth group that's starting up and that is if you are a survivor of childhood trauma childhood abuse and you also are entrepreneurial minded or you would like to learn how to start a business in a mentally healthy way like how to start a business while living with mental illness that's sort of <coughs> excuse me I know it's kind of sing-songy when I say it that way but I have a real heart to help people start businesses um, I did business coaching and I did business development and I ran Maui business development for five years before I became a coach in trauma recovery and so um, I have a real heart for that. Now, this is not to, this is not like starting your business and then growing it and, and like 
you know, for people who are like Fortune 500 companies, you know, it's going to be more of like someone who's just going to be starting a business or someone who's entrepreneurial and minded or wants to start a blog or wants to start an online business. This is not brick and mortar business stuff. So again, that's the sixth group. And that will be starting a business in a mentally healthy way or like from a trauma informed way. For people who are living with PTSD or complex PTSD and all of those online programs that try to help you start a business are triggering you because they feel slimy or smarmy or weird or salesy or like they're going to dupe you into something or sell your email address. Like if that's you, then we're going to have a group for you like that you can talk about business minded things. It will be a group focused on discussing business tactics business best practices. And then the one for chronic illness will be if you're a childhood abuse survivor and you also live with chronic pain and chronic illness and we'll be sharing um, different memes and quotes and support from a perspective of I'm also dealing with chronic pain. This is a place where I'm going to come and heal in safety where I will not feel judged for living with chronic pain. So hopefully that is a good explanation and description of what our groups are kind of about. Um, if you have any further questions about that, please send me an email at nomoreshameproject at gmail.com. And I'm Athena Moberg. And normally, you would have Bobby Parrish here with you as well. She's a little under the weather. But I'm so grateful that you took the opportunity to hang out with us tonight and to meet some new friends on our Twitter stream using the hashtag no more shame, which you can always use 24 seven, 365. And I'll try, I usually try to monitor it like a couple times a week when we're not here. So, um, but tag me if you're going to tweet out anything. Oh, I don't have my little deal up where you can see how to tweet me. Let's see here. There you go. Tweet me. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet me using the hashtag no more shame and I'm at Athena Moberg. So um, thank you so much for joining us tonight and thank you to every single one of you who were on the Twitter stream. Thank you to Tina for um, for joining us. I know it was your first night tonight and just to all of you, you guys, all of you who are just here every single week, I appreciate you. So um, Trauma Recovery University. Athena Moberg, we love to bring you everything you need for healthy, informed trauma recovery. And I will see you next Monday on live Q&A. Same bat time, same bat channel, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, every Monday using the hashtag no more shame right here on our YouTube channel, which is Trauma Recovery University. Bye, everyone.